Hello, this is the follow-up video to my recent Crimson Guitars build course where I built this guitar, or mostly, and um, the purpose of this video is to show you what I'm doing after the course to actually finish the guitar because unfortunately I didn't finish it when I was on the course. Now the first and most obvious thing that I've been doing is that I decided that um, it was a real shame to lose the figuring on the body under the blue stain and so I've been trying to sand that off. Now this is proving to be a long and arduous task. I have changed the shape of my truss rod cover. I sanded down the maple part that used to be blue and I cut it closer to size to the padauk bit and I've glued them together and I'm going to use this whole part as the truss rod cover. I've still got quite a bit of sanding to do to get rid of most of the rest of the blue. I don't think I'll be able to get all of it out because looking at it, it seems as if some of it has penetrated quite deeply into the softer parts of the wood. So I think I will still have some of these light blue striations across. I decided to buy a tusk nut because I had a nut blank but I don't have nut slot cutting saws and so between the choice of buying a, a new pre-slotted nut and buying a set of reasonable nut slotting saws the nut was actually a lot cheaper. Okay, so I have four very small blocks of wood which I'm going to just clean up and then glue on the inside of the control cavity. I've never done any soldering before, so I've been watching some videos on YouTube. I made myself a wiring diagram, which I've got on my computer screen. And I've been pulling together a number of tools and things, and hopefully ready to do some soldering.
To do this I bought a very cheap soldering iron. I think it cost me about £8 and it's a 40 watt one. finished and ready to go in the guitar. Now I had a question on one of the other videos about how to ground the Hannah's Bridge and what we decided to do was to ground all of the ferules individually and that's by running a wire through here that, um, that they all touch. So Christopher actually drilled holes through here under the surface between the different holes and I'm now going to try to feed a wire through all of these holes which will then be the grounding wire. This may be easier said than done. Okay, there we go. Another problem to sort out is that this connector has just come loose. I don't know why. So I need to work out how to fix that back on. Okay, for the truss rod cover, I've just made a small piece here, which will fit in there. And I just need to file it down a little bit so that it fits smoothly. And that's going to be glued onto the back of, of this. And I'm going to do a little test before and after the magnets are fitted. So the magnets have not been fitted. Let's slip this in here. Turn it upside down and there we go. Now just to show you how I'm installing these magnets, um, I've actually got a magnet, I put one of the magnets on the tip of this chisel and then I simply drop a bit of super glue over the hole here, take the chisel slide it over just to pop the magnet into the hole and slide the chisel off. And now the moment of truth. Truss rod cover. I haven't tried this before. And there we are. The, the holes for the volume and tone pots were a little bit small so I just filed them open a little bit more so as you can see that fits through perfectly now. Uh, however, my push-pull tone pot is a little bit high here. You see I won't be able to fit the um, cavity cover on there. And so I need to I need to route out a little bit of the wood here to make enough space. The bridge is a little bit tricky because I have to put all of these wires individually through these holes. Just to remind you, these are the cables from the individual piezo um, pickups which are under the saddles.
Now these are shallow top locking tuners. Very nice. Oh dear. I've had to route out a couple of bits of the underside of the cavity cover for um, electronic components which were a bit too tall for the depth of the cavity that I have. Right, so I've had some problems to deal with. You know about the tone pot which was a bit too large for the uh, too deep for the cavity and I've solved that by routing out a, a bit of a hole. I have the same issue with this switch here, the three-way blade switch for the pickups, and I've very carefully routed it out again and the, the top is quite thin there, I'm afraid, probably only about a millimetre and a half, so I hope that will be okay. I also had an issue that uh, I didn't have the right screws and so what I've had to do to fix that blade switch in is to cr create two very small blocks of wood there which I've actually screwed into in order to fix that down. So that is a bit fiddly too. But now I reckon I'm ready to do the soldering. So I didn't video the second part of the soldering which I did this afternoon, but partly because I had lots of little problems to sort out. Um, let me show you what we look like at the moment. So I think all of the soldering is done. Um, the main thing left to do at the moment actually is to put in the switch for the piezo system. And as you might be able to see, I'm watching the last hour of Ben's recent nine hour build for inspiration and also for a little bit of comfort that uh, he keeps making mistakes as well, so I'm not the only one. But why is this switch, which comes as part of a very expensive um, bridge and preamp system, not provided together with the right screws? For me, that's, that's very lax. Now, I suppose if you're a luthier, you know what screws you need to use and you have them to hand. But those of us who aren't, don't. I think everything's in there. It's actually time to put some and strings on. So I've received the inlay powders from Crimson Guitars. There are six of them. There's bronze, brass, copper, aluminium, um, gunmetal grey and carbon black. And I just need to decide what I'm going to put in there, what colour, and, um, and then get to it.
So I just sprinkled a little bit of bronze powder on there just to put a bit of variety in the colours. I'm sorry to say that we've actually come to the end of the road, at least for now, with this guitar. And I'll tell you why. Because um, a while ago I noticed that um, the neck had developed quite a pronounced bow. And um, so a friend and I were trying to correct that using the truss rod, by adjusting the truss rod. And unfortunately it appears that the, the neck here was a bit too thin and actually the end of the truss rod is broken through the back of the neck. I'll show you if I bring it up here. You can probably see that. Now I think that's pretty much irreparable and the only thing that I could do would be to cut the neck off, route out the neck pocket again and replace the neck and I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. So, unfortunately, this is going to stay as it is now until such time in the future when I decide to actually do that. The good news is that I'm going back to Crimson in just over a month's time, in late May, and I'm going to try again. So this time I'm going to try to make something a little bit simpler and um, I'm not leaving until I've got a finished guitar. I'm sorry this has come to a, a rather abrupt and uh, sad end, but uh, hopefully next time will go better. And maybe one day this guitar will actually be finished and, and will live again. So thanks for watching. Um, keep an eye on my channel because I will do something for the next guitar. It probably won't be as detailed as it was for this one, but um, Keep an eye out for that. And thanks again. Bye-bye.